This is the complete human skeleton in an interior or ventral view. Looking at both divisions of the human skeleton, the axial skeleton, which consists of the skull and the vertebral column and the ribcage and the appendicular skeleton which consists of the pectoral girdle and the upper extremities and uh, the pelvic girdle and the lower uh, extremities. So if we uh, start with the skull, we are uh, looking at a frontal or interior view of the skull and we see some of the cranial bones and some of the facial bones. So we see the frontal bone. We uh, also see the parietal bones. And uh, we notice the orbit where the eyes are located. And we also, in this view, notice the zygomatic bones. And we see the nasal bones. We also see the perpendicular plate, which is part of the ethmoid bone. We also see part of the vemur bone. And then we have upper jaw the maxilla and we also see the lower jaw the mandible if we uh, take a look at uh, the skull in a lateral view we uh, see the temporal bone and we also see the suture between the temporal bone in between the parietal bone, and uh, that is the uh, squamous suture. And then if we uh, go toward the posterior or the dorsal side of the skull, we uh, see the occipital bone. We also see the two parietal bones. And we also see the suture between the occipital bone and between the parietal bone, and that is the lambdoidal suture. And we also see the suture between the two parietal bones, and uh, that is the sagittal uh, suture. On the dorsal view, of the, of the skeleton, we uh, see the vertebral column and all the vertebra that make up the vertebral column. Inside of the vertebral column, of course, we have the spinal cord. So the vertebra provide protection for the spinal cord. If we uh, take a look at the cervical vertebra, we uh, notice the first cervical, which is known as the atlas, and the second cervical, which is known as the axis. The two vertebrae, they form a joint in between them, and the joint is a pivot joint. And the pivot joint allows us to do rotation of the head. We also notice on the dorsal side of the vertebral column, 
we notice the spines of each of the vertebra in the uh, thoracic area and also in the lumbar area. And then uh, as we go down to the pelvic area, we notice the fused vertebra of the sacrum. And uh, then at the end in there we have the tail or the carcass uh, vertebra. We also notice on the dorsal view the attachment of the ribs to the vertebra. And then if we take a look at the rib cage in the ventral or anterior view, uh, we uh, notice the sternum and the upper part of the sternum that's known as the manibrium. Below mani the manibrium is the body of the sternum. And then the lower part, which is a cartilage, that's the xiphoid process of the sternum. On the abdominal view in here, we see the bodies of the vertebra. These are the bony parts of the vertebra. And in between them, we notice the fibrocartilage that forms the intervertebral disc between each vertebra in the vertebral column. If we take a look at the pectoral girdle, we notice the clavicle on the right side and on the left side of the body. The clavicle is attached to the sternum in the interior and uh, on the posterior we have the, the scapula so this is the left side of the body this is the scapula of the left side of the body and uh, this is the scapula of the right side of the body. We notice that on the dorsal side of the scapula, we have the spine. We also need to notice that on the lateral side of the scapula, we have a cavity called the glenoid cavity. And attached to the glenoid cavity is the head of the humerus, which is the bone of the upper arm. The head of the humerus and the glenoid cavity, they form a joint. It's known as ball and socket joints. And that's the joints that allow us to do three types of movements. We do abduction, adduction, circumduction, and flexion extension. If we uh, take a look at the humerus down toward the lower arm, we notice that on the posterior side of the humerus, we have a depression known as the olecranon fossa. And the olecranon fossa connects with uh, projections from the ulna that projection is known as the electronin process. So the electronin process of the ulna and the electronin fossa of the humerus, they form a joint that we call the hinge joint. And that is the joint that allows us to do flexion and extension. Next to the ulna, we have the radius, and uh, the radius in the correct anatomical position is in the same 
position as the thumb. And then we have the bones of the hands, which are the carpals, metacarpals, and the phalanges. If we uh, take a look at the pelvic girdle, the pelvic girdle is made up of two bones. These two bones are known as the coxal bones. So this is the right coxal bone, and this is the left coxal bone. Each coxal bone is made up of three bones. The upper flat bone is the ilium, and the lower posterior bone is the ischium. And on the anterior side of the coxal bone, we have the third bone, which is the pubic bone. So if we take a look at the coxal bones, one of the things we notice on the coxal bone is there is a depression known as the acetabulum. And the acetabulum forms a joint with the head of the femur. So if we uh, uh, take a closer look at the head of the femur, we uh, notice the acetabulum. That is a joint just like the pectoral girdle or the shoulder joint. That's a, a ball and sack joint, and it also allows three type of movement similar to the uh, shoulder joint. So it allows us to do circumduction, flexion, extension, abduction, and adduction. This is the anterior view of the pelvic girdle. And uh, we notice in the anterior view the two pubic bones. These are the pubic bones. And in between the pubic bones, we notice a cartilage. Uh, that is uh, the pubic symphysis cartilage that forms a joint that allow only slight movement, particularly during childbirth. In this view, we see the vertebrae of the tailbone or the carcass. And uh, one of the things that uh, uh, we can do is looking at the position of the carcass to determine whether we're looking at a male or a female pelvis. In the male pelvis, the carcass will be curved toward the interior, and uh, that's one of the differences between male and female pelvises. If we uh, continue to the word the leg, we have two bones. We have the tibia, which is located medial in our body, and we have the fibula, which is lateral. And then we have the bones of the foot, and one of the major bones of the foot in the tarsal bones, and one of them is known as the calcaneus bone, which is the heel bone. And then we have the metatarsals, and we have the phalanges. If we uh, take a look at the area between the femur and between the tibia and the fibula, we notice that that is part of the knee joint anatomy, and one of the bones involved in there, patella, is shown in there. So in the knee joint, we have four bones involved. We have the femur bone, the tibia, and the fibula, and the patella. These are all bones in the knee joints. Uh, we don't see the ligaments in this model, but there are two kinds of ligaments. There are cruciate ligaments and collateral ligaments that hold these bones in the knee joints. We also, in the knee joints, we have cartilage that are known as lateral and medial uh, meniscus. So this is a, a brief introduction to the bones of the human 
skeleton 